And this is what I want to show you. When Apostle Ndobe brought that message many years ago, we were in an uncompleted building. We didn't own the building. And uh, we tried, it wasn't even plastered. It wasn't, no windows, a lot of things. We tried to, our best to fix the pulpit area. And it's a small place. I don't know whether it could take up to 400 people. Eh? Maybe around that. 300. Okay, 400. Okay. And so, I used to be a giver. God now taught me. And the Bible said that the just shall live by faith. I that is a fact. You stop walking by faith, you start dying. Because you are saved by faith. That's how you got your salvation. Your spiritual life starts shrinking. Your capacity in God starts shrinking. You stop walking. The just shall live by faith, but they die by unbelief. Show them the verse before that. Verse 37. For yet a little while he that shall come shall come, he will not tarry. Okay, verse 38. The just shall live by faith. If anyone draw back, my soul shall not. Once people start doubting God, you start failing God. Once you start doubting God, you start disappointing him. Some of us have started well in faith, but if it, this, if anyone draw back, it's beginning to happen to you. There is another place that this statement was made in the New Testament. Find it. Is it Romans or, or what? Find that one. I want to show them something else there. Take note about this drawing back. People that have started a powerful work with God, moving by faith, and somewhere, they start shrinking. Some start trusting in their own ability. Some start explaining God their way. They don't at the initial time when they are in Egypt, because there's no way they can come out. Many of them do well even in the wilderness. Some, their problems start in the wilderness. But once they get to a level of comfort, they start explaining God their way. It's now my strength, the power of my hand. So we're going to read from verse 16. Yeah. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Okay, look at verse 17. Everybody read verse 71 to go. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, what? The just shall. Now, the first one warned us about starting a faith walk and drawing back. You don't graduate from faith to unbelief. This one tells us about forward moving in faith. He said... That the life of faith is from faith to faith. From one dimension to another. So, I want to talk to you shortly about expanding your capacity. Enlarging your capacity. Because you cannot accomplish anything beyond your level of vision and faith. What limits what God can do with you is the size of your vision and the size of your faith. If this faith thing is like a muscle, it is meant to be developed, to be expanded as you use it. It does not grow while it's dormant. It grows when it's being used, when it's being exercised. I can even show it to them. Where the Bible said that your faith will grow it exceedingly. It's meant to be expanded and it has no limits. See, you are capable of doing everything God can do. Because the Bible said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. But he also said, if you believe, nothing shall be impossible unto you. 
God made you in his image. There is divine capacity inside you. You, you, are, you are just operating at a level, but that's not God's plan for you. He put his image and likeness. He made you like himself. Just like a man gives birth to a child. You give birth to a baby boy. You have given birth to your image. But development is what the child needs to grow to the level of his father. He needs two things. He needs to be fed and he needs to exercise. These are two things responsible for growth and capacity development. So people need knowledge. They need knowledge. They need information. But they need to exercise that knowledge to grow. So faith comes by hearing. It comes by hearing. Faith grows only when revelation grows. If revelation gets stunted, the growth of faith gets stunted. Your faith will never outgrow your size of revelation. The size of your mind is the size of your world. So when you are thinking about lack, thinking about poverty, me, God cannot, you know, I can't give God one million. It is not God that is limited though. It's not God that has problems. It's you. You limit your word with your mind, your thoughts. If you want to enlarge a man, you have to first enlarge his thinking capacity, his knowledge base. When we talk about capacity building, what we're talking about is human capital development. Knowledge, knowledge, training, education. That's how you build a person's capacity. But then the second dimension to Capacity building is getting them to practice. If it's mathematics, don't just keep giving them theories in the class. Get them to solve mathematical problems. Give them assignments. Give them readings. Give them things to tackle. As they tackle it, the theory is converted to substance. You don't take a group of guys, you say you're training them to fly aircraft, to become pilot, and you lock them in the class. The first stage of capacity building is to give them knowledge. They have to give them all those things. They read all those theoretical parts. Then you have to get them up on air with experienced pilot to fly. And then they sit with you in the cockpit, and you're showing them, and after a while, you let them handle the plane. You don't learn how to fly a plane by just sitting with a group of textbooks in your room. You will never learn. Read till eternity. You will never learn how to fly. So faith comes by hearing. So when a man grows in revelation, his faith capacity grows. But then that capacity to deliver results does not till he starts exercising that faith. Hmm. And that force called faith can deliver anything. That's what God used to create the universe. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is a substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Uh -huh. Verse 2. By it, the elders. Look at verse 3. You see how God used it. Through faith, we understand that the worlds, plural, plural world, not just the earth, but the spiritual realm, the galaxies, the, the, the different planets, we are framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. God uses mount, his faith. To create physical world, mountains, elephants from intangible things. From things you cannot see. Put in another way. Apostle Paul was writing about it. He said, God calls the things that be not as though they were. Then after calling it, it appears. It is that capacity, that nature that he gave you and I. 
when he made us in, your, in, in his image. That man is that creature that has capacity to create things from the realm of thought, the realm of the visible to the realm of reality. I don't know if you have observed for those who think that man is just mere animals, those who believe in evolution and some of these other things, have you observed the lion has not been able to dream and build something to fly. The lion has not been able to even make pants, just cover his nakedness. The lion, the way the lion dropped here in the Garden of Eden when God made them, after thousands of years, they are still like that. I don't know if you've noticed, in case you think we are cousins to chimpanzees, haven't you noticed that the mama chimpanzee have not learned how to make bra? Haven't you noticed? But it's the same raw materials that we have in the forest that we are using. Do cuttings grow in, in our own parlor? Cutting grow in the bush. Why can't they use cotton and make their own wrapper and tie it? If you ever see a chimpanzee dressed up, it's a human being that did it. So the size of your world, of your mind, is the size of your world. You don't expand here. For example now, the Nigerian youths will launch the National Youth Project. The issue of creating jobs for these young people. Even in the crusade, I met the problem I was talking about. Yeah, the guy has been healed now. Uh -huh. But what is he doing with his life? Is he healing? Healing is the entrance and salvation. You have come to Christ. What about the destiny? So he, the guy was out of school. The gospel is not just get people saved. We're doing well, getting people healed, getting them saved, getting them delivered. Is that all that God has for his children? I have come to realize is far, far more than that. His dream for his people is that they will end up in dominion. Amen. Clap, oh, clap, oh, clap. <laughs> but I have learned that it is by stretching my faith, by exercising it like that man that walks out in the gym. Today I'm able to do 10 kilograms, but somebody is carrying 50 Another person is carrying 100. I can't carry 100, but I can move my 10 to 20. And when I do 20, it stretches me after a while, 20 is normal. Then I can move to 30. When I do 30, it stretches me again. After a while, 30 is nothing. That is how it is done. Faith is like muscle. It does not grow till it's exercised. And it needs to be exercised in an increasing level. So it, it becomes what is called ever-increasing faith. That's the tip of the uh, uh, Fred Price ministry. is going to be with the Lord, ever-increasing faith. Kenneth Hagin spent 50 years talking on that. The greatest faith teacher that ever lived. 50 years of his life teaching on that. 50 years and the Lord Jesus told him stay on it because this is where my children are having problem he said be it unto you according to your faith that's what you hear for Jesus every time that's why this man is operating in millions the other one in thousands it is not that God is partial it is to every man according to his faith your faith capacity decides how much you can receive how much God can use you. When it comes to your church growth, when it comes to pastoring, don't go and say, God has called me to only pastor 100 people. Stop lying to yourself. The Great Commission is the harvest of the nations. You tell yourself those theology to allow your mind sleep for things that are not working. No. There is faith for nations. There is faith for cities. There is faith for the harvest. There is faith for finance. There is faith for healing. There is faith for different things that God has provided. 
Stop justifying your own belief. And when you get to heaven, I ask him, is this all? He said, yeah, is your, it is to you according to your faith. A prophet told a woman that was in debt and the creditors were coming to take the children and put them into slavery. He said, go borrow empty vessels, not a few. Go borrow, gather for your neighbor as many empty vessels. Don't make it small, don't make it few. God is going to fill them with oil. You're going to start, you're a widow, you're a poor, but you're starting an oil business. And it's going to be supernatural by supernatural provision. And then we, she went, gathered certain level of vessels, locked her door, and the small cruise of oil she had, she started pouring. That cruise was flowing, filled vessels, filled vessels, filled. When it got to the last empty one, it filled it to the brim. The supernatural stopped. It was not God that stopped it. It was her that limited God. And she told the prophet, I feed all the vessels I brought. He said, go sell it, start your oil business, and then live on the rest. So you see, pay off the creditors and live on the rest. Now, watch. If all the level of oil she was able to draw made her two million, it was not God that said stop at two. She could have gone for 100 million. She could have actually gone for 500. She could have actually gone for a billion. Is this how God is going to take the world using you? Is this how you are going to sponsor the gospel? Is this how you are going to feed the poor? Is this how you are going to build schools? Is this how some of you that God wants to be feeding a thousand people? Is this how you are going to do it? The issue, some of you, your whole vision is about you. There is nothing else. And a few that even try to expand, it is now me, my family, my dad and my brothers and sisters. God, you see, what is the problem God has? I made you in my image. My capacity is in you. If you want to die small, don't blame it on God. It's not God. There's something I'm going to release here just in a few minutes. 2023 is a year of acceleration. You are going to move at a speed. People will see you. They'll be wondering, what is this? How did, did this happen to this boy? Because he has happened to me again and again. From that boy in that uncompleted building. You are the one that brought the message. And it was so serious that even, even, even Papa in the house was here in, in, in Nigeria at that time. He has not gone. When he speaks, the man was an oracle of God. When you listen to him, you know that this is not normal. There is something this man has in his mouth. But for some reason, my situation resisted his anointing and his preaching. Because in my mind, I told myself, mm, this is for people like that. I just explained the way it cannot be me. Because of suffering, problems and then you brought this message passing the monitors I'm glad he's still alive it's not for Nigeria it's now what you do with it so what changed me now you have heard the sentence Okay, so capacity building is knowledge. But what is now going to be the difference? What did you do with the knowledge? So expanding your capacity, there are five elements involved. Number one, expand your vision. Your vision for the kingdom. Your vision for yourself. 
expand it. God cannot walk through you, walk for you beyond the size of your vision. And that's why when he gave the other animals instinct to help them navigate their way so they can find their road, even the birds, when they even fly, they find their nest. He went beyond and gave human beings imagination. If he gave them imagination, they would have been creators and inventors. He gave us that. There are certain things he gave us, he didn't give them, that made us the superior beings that we are. Number two, when you are going for higher level, you have to find substance. Faith is a substance. You don't have faith or nothing. It's not like walking on air. There must be something under you you are standing on. So that substance is God's word. Ladies and gentlemen, faith is not just faith in faith. Faith in anything is somebody's confidence and trust on trust said the Lord. There is natural faith. Because I'm talking about the supernatural faith, the biblical faith. There is natural faith. And sometimes it is trust in another person's words. If you remove it, banks will collapse. If I don't know, I will get back my money after depositing. Ha. Let me tell you something about economy of nations, economy of banks, economy of businesses, economy. It stands on hope, faith, and love. If any of these shakes, your business can collapse tomorrow morning. If you all hear rumor now, the first bank is going to be folded up on Tuesday. It can be a lie, but they circulate it on social media and people believe it. Do you know what will happen first thing in the morning? From 5 a.m., everybody will go there, withdraw all their money. What will happen to First Bank? What is it that was removed that made First Bank? It is not anything physical. Faith was just removed from the organization. The organization. Part of what Nigeria's economy is suffering is that people don't have faith in it. People bury money in the burial ground. People keep their money in their wardrobe. If you see what they're trying to do with changing Naira. People put their money in dollars. People put their money in other people's currencies. People send their money abroad because we need a government that will restore faith and confidence on the Nigerian economy the Nigerians will start returning money they kept abroad and invest it in this economy. Then other countries will bring their investment, create companies, manufacturing, and all kinds of things, and jobs. That is how economies grow. I want you to know that it's not just a theological thing we teach in church. For example, these four, three cardinal things, there's one called hope. You carry certain money, you invest in stock exchange. You carry some money, put in real estate. You will have expectation that this thing will grow and give you interest. That they will pay you 15% or 10% or that when you put it in real estate, it will give you certain. That's what is called hope. The expectation you have of. So when you don't, you, can, you, you to see a bigger future, you don't see. It destroys initiative. It destroys ability to grow. The one you call love is now customer service. What you do to care for the people who invest in your organization. The different things you do to take care of them. Tamper with these things. Start cheating them. Be giving them fake products. It's only once you can cheat me. By the time I get home and see that you have you've lost me. A pastor that wants a big church needs to understand you have to invest heavily in customer service. The sick people are there. People that are barren. People that are having marriage problems. People that are demon oppressed. All, all issues is not what you get from people first. It is what you will invest in them first if you want to see explosion. You think it's a business term? I've gone to some of the biggest business schools in the world, they will tell you 
that things like integrity is a business word. Then your company, your business is not going anywhere without it. That your organization must have values and culture. Because we call here, we just call them righteousness, integrity, uprightness in the Bible. God is teaching you how to be, succeed like Daniel, succeed like Joseph. When people can trust you, because out there they call it the trust capital. You want to build a lasting ministry, you cannot do it by deceiving people, cheating people, lying to people. You just have a time, you are going to vanish. It's just a while. The Bible says righteousness and justice is the foundation of his throne. We are supposed to build our foundation for anything, whether it's marriage, anything we are building on the same type of foundation. Jesus, talking about him, he said, because you love righteousness and hate wickedness, God, even your God, has exalted you, has anointed with the oil of gladness above your fellow. My best friend is my integrity. Doesn't matter what you, anybody does with himself. Because the person that sings with you today will sin against you tomorrow. When you have that common whatever, you can team up. Maybe for armed robbery, for corruption. Tomorrow, the same person is the one carrying you, exposing all that. So, you see, you have to expand your vision. And then this vision, don't leave it in the future. You have to set, break it down to meet and goals. I don't want to spend time on goal setting, but let's even start talking about we are about to enter another year. You have to have at least a, an annual goals. And those goals, break them down into achievables, deliverables every week. Every day you see me, including today, I have seven things I want to accomplish. Apostle Ndobe. You don't succeed by accident. You have to start intentional living. You have to start intentional living. The way you left your house, you knew where you were going. That's why you got here. You set the destination before you leave your habitation. You set the destination before you leave your location. And with that, then your efforts, your energy is being channeled towards something. You're not just wasting away, drifting about. You're going to set goals. And the goals you're going to set for 2023, the minimum is double of what you've been operating. Try this so that when I pray now, the anointing will not waste. Because you see, if there is nothing on the ground, and you open all the windows of heaven and pour rain, at the end of the day, all that rain will still produce nothing. If there is no seed, give God something to work with. If there is no goal, if there is no seed, the anointing does not have something to multiply. The anointing is the multiplication factor. It does to your life what rain does to crops. But even if it falls on nothing, nothing. The X factor is coming on you. It has already started this morning. But now you have to give it something to work with. Something to multiply. Jesus said, they, they brought him, go look for bread. And they found five loaves and two fishes. Give God something to multiply. Something to work with. That woman that had multiplication, the prophet asked, what do you have in your house? God the anointing will bring multiplication, but you have to bring something to multiply. He said it was only a cruise of oil. He said that is what God will start with. When Jesus asked the question, he said it's only five loaves, two fishes. He said, don't worry, you will now see. What do you have in your hand? What are the gifts? What are the talents? What, what are the dreams? What goals do you have? God is not going to work on nothing. What dreams do you have? What talents, what abilities, what opportunities. And some of you, relationships are given to you, contact, and you're wasting it. You even abuse some of those relationships. 
You know, because you have nothing. People like us that have big things want to come. Treasure people. We treasure relationships. We understand why God brings them. Because Jesus said, when you give, it shall be given back to you. But I've never seen God rain money down from heaven. So Jesus explains how the harvest comes. He said, good measure, press down, shaking together. Shall men, 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 human beings, relationships, networks, contacts, will give to your bosom. God is going to use people. You're not going to build your future alone. Even though I'm not following it anymore in order, but you should put it there that your contact, exposure, relationships is part of how you expand your world and your capacity. There are certain relationships that when they come into your world, your world expands. For example, I don't come into anybody's life and the person remains the same because I come with high capacity, I bring high capacity. You can see the young man just meeting me there on the stage and I just heard from his mouth dropped out of school now he can go back to school but that is that is just small that is just nothing compared to I bring high capacity with me and then when I learned the value of relationship God now explained to me he said can you imagine that some people play with me some of my children play with me he said can you imagine having the US president as your friend and you play with that relationship can you imagine having the president of your country as your friend or father, as some people play with it. He said, can you imagine that some of my children play with me? They don't understand. Me that can do and undo. Me that, can, that has everything at my beck and call. They don't know who I am. Even me. He was talking to me about his children. He didn't point his finger at me. But me, I fell on the ground and cried for myself first. And told him, I don't know who you are talking about, but let's start with the one that is listening. Please, if there is any area, anything at all, that I have brought anywhere close, talk less of making it first, I destroy that idol instantly. The leverage the, my relationship with the Holy Spirit gives me. The leverage. Ay, ay, ay. If you remove that, I'm finished. But the same way you come at the human level. Sometimes when you finish sowing seeds, what God does is that He brings certain people. He brings certain new relations. He brings certain contacts. He brings certain. And what He will do. God just gives you favor. And one day of favor is worth a thousand years of labor. It can wipe years of sufferings, years of toiling. Are you seeing capacity in life when they're part of it? You don't just get knowledge and ignore people that God is bringing into your life to bless you like your children. Don't ignore the development of their future. You don't know who you are raising. You don't know if you are raising Barack Obama. You don't know if you are raising. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. This thing has nothing to do because you are better than somebody. Show it to them. Is it on Acts chapter 10 where Peter got to the house of Cornelius? He said, God has taught me not to call any man unclean. He used to despise the Gentile because he was a Jew. And God showed him unclean animals and told him, Peter, rise, kill it. He said, never. I've never done anything like that, never. So God now explained to him, it was about mission to the Gentiles. So he said, you know that it's an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, have a relationship with another, somebody from another nation. But God has showed me, I should not call any man, common, uncle. You don't know who you are dealing with. Next verse. Therefore, that's why I came. Then go to the verse where he said it this way. That the same God is rich unto all that call upon him. The starting statement of Peter is that God is no respecter of a person. That the same God is rich. 
is there. Just find the verse. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. 34, yes. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now, that God is no respecter of persons. This scripture taught me that favor, whatever wisdom, is not a special position of the whites. And my friends, it's not a, an exclusive preserve of Canada. In every nation. At, at that time, the Jewish people used to sort the rest of us. Now, maybe there's some other person sorting you. It might be rich, sorting the poor. It might be island people looking down on mainland people. You know Lagos now? It's an Ephesus city. Even when the person is hungry because he moved to Ireland. He might be in one room somewhere. When he comes here, he will be posing for you people that he, I live in the island, in Lakey. Where, where? Take me to which part of Lakey. Even those after uh, uh, Dangote refinery, you keep going. They are all living in Lakey. When you meet real rich people, they don't boast. I sat with them for weeks in class. They wear jeans. They do normal things. They don't, they don't talk about monies. People that really have the money. You know there is somebody there now. One transaction with your company, one business, he gives your company. Your prayer request for the next five years has been answered. Five years. There is somebody there. One business he does with your company. Your ten year goal cancelled. There are levels. Of That's why today your own level is going to expand. Okay, let me end it. So here God picks a man. He wants to use him. His name is Abraham. And he was having problem with believing God. This faith thing. And without it, you can't please God. Without it, you can't do big things. Without it, you can't do many things. So God comes to him, Genesis 15. Look at what he said. He said, Abraham, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. He gave Abraham two things there. Number one, I will protect you and your defense, your shield. Number two, I am now coming into your life as your reward. I'm offering you relationship, friendship with me. It's like president knocking on your door tomorrow morning president of the country and say I'm paying you a visit I want to now be your friend for now Abraham said something that was surprising he answered God and said what will you give me seeing I go childless this Eliezer of Damascus that is in my house my servant that came from another country is going to inherit everything I have. King James said he will be my heir. Okay. He said, what will you give me seeing I go childless? Even if you come into my life. Now, that statement, God noted it. So, eh, you value a child more than me, no problem. I will give you the child. But days are coming. We need to check this. You see, when you're talking about tests, money tests, I'll give you the child. I'm telling you, I'm coming into your life, and you told me, what is that? What I, I want is a child. But I need to look, show you something about Abraham. His name was Abraham. Abraham means childless. Yes. I've just broke it down to the best way you can explain. It means a person... So, people call you childless all your life. He has entered his mind. His mind can't see a better picture. 
It was not that God could not get him pre- get his wife to be pregnant or get him to conceive. God has all capability. But the problem is, there's something about the man that can't see. Some of us are here. How do you solve the problem? So apostle, when I was at a certain level, it wasn't working. I even hear preaching, the preaching, because I can't see myself being, that's when this mystery was revealed to me. How did God solve his problem? Everyone say pictures. Say it again, pictures. Everyone say pictures. Uh For me, in that uncompleted building, God said, go and bring Rehan Bonke's picture where stadiums are filled. Paste it in your office. Paste it in your study. Paste it in your room. When you sit in the toilet, the door behind you. You know that toilet place is a place of meditation. Bedroom is another one, especially if you use shower. Because once you close your eyes, that water starts hitting you, your mind goes into operation. But the only problem is that water will spoil if you, unless you frame it. So, toilet was one of my vision. I get pictures of Rehabonke's crusade. And of course, he has come to my city once. I went there, got our people to help him serve. And I will see that whatever. He said, this is what I want you to start seeing. This is what I will do with you. I'm still praying for 500 members. For us to grow to 600. Of course, if we ever get to 800, it's like we have gone around the whole world and conquered the world. That's, my mind can't grow. God said, I'm going to make you father of nations. I said, no, no, no. You don't know who you are talking to. He said, father of many nations. I said, no, 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 no. I'm asking you, please, just fill this auditorium for us. Because that small place, we, we divided it to, because we could not fill it. Just fill this place. You are telling me about which nations. So, I have God's word, but it's not penetrating. It's like that woman, you do all the things, but the pregnancy, miscarriages, miscarriages. So, how did God solve this problem for Abraham? Behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This shall not be your hair, but somebody born in your house that will come out of your own bow shall be your hair. Your own child. You're talking to somebody that is that old, though. You young men are finding hard to believe God and an old man like this believe this. It looked like nonsense. You see what I'm telling you? Faith is not a walk into nothing. You have to have substance. What a word from God. Go to your Bible. Find scriptures that pro- support what you are believing God. Find scriptures to base your destiny. You have a ministry. Find scriptures to base that ministry. To anchor. Find an anchor. A landing place. It is a foundation. It is stronger than rock. It's stronger than the material world that you live in. Because it is God's word that created matter. Time and space. In the beginning. That's time. God made the heavens. That's space. And the earth. That's matter, material things. It is spoken word that created it all. So that same word can reverse time. Like he said, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten. Some of you have lost 10 years. You may have lost a year. You may have lost some of them. Hey, it's the same word that controls time and space. And control material things. You see car. You see all the tangible things you see. You have to find. A thought said the Lord. Go to your Bible. Sometimes God gives it to you. Rema by revelation. It just speaks to your spirit. But go to the Bible. Find scriptures. At least one or two. That actually are basis. They promise what you are talking about. But that is not enough. Even when the word of the Lord came to him and said, you are going to have a child, some, somebody from your own loin will be your hair. It was still hard for Abraham. So look at verse 5. God brought him forth. God had to use pictures. He said, come outside in the night. 
And Abraham came and said, He said, Look up and see the stars. Uh -huh. You see, the word of God is in his heart. Faith comes by hearing, yet it wasn't enough. God needed his imagination to be engaged. God wants pictures in his mind. Because the pictures of today are the realities of tomorrow. The dreams of today are the realities of tomorrow. It is the pregnancy a woman carries that she will deliver. When you deliver and it's a, a baby girl, it is a baby girl that was inside. It's the pictures you carry within that will become the reality that will show. God put cause that the universe, the angelic forces, the spiritual world, only delivers and call it, it will, they will cooperate to deliver the image you are carrying inside you. Can you dream of 50,000 people? That will be the size of your church letter. Can you dream of 10,000? Can you dream of filling stadiums? So this struggling boy began to get pictures of stadiums. Pictures of her bunker. And then I now remembered every time I go to visit Papa Idahosa in Benin, you see pictures of T.L. Osborne or a robot. These men that move mighty car. You see it in his office. Then he wrote there, no small dreams here. He don't talk negative in his office. They don't take it. And he has trained his staff. No, no, he don't talk nonsense there. He said, without faith, you cannot please God. And without faith, you can't please Papa. I and God speaks the same language now. If God says it, I believe it, that settles it. Everybody say that. If God says it, I believe it, that settles it. That's how Papa broke loose. And I said, oh my God, I've been very stupid. I've been seeing this thing in his office. I didn't know. I went and got his own picture. Where he, he deals with stadium. I put in my office. You know when you came later, you heard that I'm now in the stadium. Eh? This is how I moved from that place. I put pictures of wheelchairs, people dropping crutches, where tear lost one, and others, I put it. I'm getting pregnant with healing ministry. I'm getting pregnant with mass. He said, come out and look at the stars. If you're able to number them, he said to him, so shall your seed be. And look at the next verse. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for right. What just turned this doubter to a believer? What just changed the man that had been struggling for 25 years to now believe? The power of pictures. The power of imagination. Many years after, God had to teach this same lesson. To his grandson Jacob, where he was under Laban, learning how to raise cattle, and Laban cheated him for 20 years. How did God turn around that young man and made him a millionaire, made him a multi, a wealthy person like his father? He showed him how to use this. This is what you are going to do. You are barren. Find pictures of women that have children. They are all in the internet. Print it. Paste. Paste in your mirror. Women, you like to make up. When you stand there, you'll be looking at the babies. Paste behind your toilet door. When you sit down there, you're looking at babies. Paste pictures of people. Even dedicating twins. You are having problem with business growth. Get Elon Musk. Get the kind of money he's making. Paste it. Get Otedola. Get Dangote. Paste it. 
Now, my faith grew and I broke through that place. The place God filled. We started two services. Before we know, we went to indoor sports. Indoor sports. You see, it's from faith to faith. Ever increasing faith. Then things started happening. All of a sudden, the city where I was living, Enugu woke up. Enugu knew that this boy existed. They didn't know who I was. They woke up. Then there is a surge towards Dominion City. This is the first Dominion City. And if that one failed, it would have affected everything we are doing. If that one was stunted, it is that, that jaundice thing that we have been reproducing everywhere. That's when the idea and the concept of Dominion came. Our name till that time was New Covenant Family. We see, keep the name of from this enlargement, dominion was brought into the equation. And that's how that name, Dominion City, was created. But now, I'm having problem with finance. I'm getting result here. We're winning a lot of souls, touching a lot of lives. We're having problem with finance. And the Lord said, it's the same faith you use for this that you use for finance. Okay, Genesis 15. See how he taught the man how to get properties, landed properties. And how to get money. The same Abraham. Now, chapter 13. Chapter 13. And the Lord spoke to Abraham after Lot had departed from him. Uh, Apostle, you know that in chapter 12 that God told him I will bless you, I will make you rich I will make your name great so he has the word of God he has the word of God he has it but it's still a challenge in his mind so now look at chapter 13 verse 14 and the Lord said to Abraham after Lot departed from him lift now thy eyes Look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward. Verse 15. For all the land that you see to you, I will give it unto your seed forever. Believing God for property. A lot of people, that's where you have problems. How can you be pastoring three years? You have not bought one land. How can you? If you don't buy land and build church, when are you ever going to be a landlord? If you can't use your faith for the kingdom, you will die living a small life. And it's not God. The reason he told us, put the kingdom first. That is where you learn to stretch your faith. And once you stretch it, it carries your own personal word along. He said, and every other thing will be what? Added. That's what the Lord taught me about finance. Use the kingdom to stretch what new level you want to operate in. It is that same faith you used to believe for that. Give at that level. That now moves your own life to the same level. So God went back to his imagination, to his mind, and said, Go look at these properties. For example, living in a particular city, I was trying to believe God for one plot, one plot. And I was believing that the governor of the city will find a way to give it to us. First of all, commissioner. And when you put your faith in man, you're looking for trouble. The Bible says, cost is he that puts his faith in man. God will use human beings, but don't make human beings your source. Make God your source. Then allow him to use whosoever he wants. To think he must be your uncle because he's rich, you are making a big mistake. That's why you get yourself hurt and wounded and disappointed. Make God, whosoever you put as your source is your God. Make God your source. Don't make your job your source. Don't make what they pay you at the end of the month your source. You will never walk in what I'm talking about, this level of faith. 
Receive that sarali. Put it. That's one of the channels. Your job is a channel of blessing. People are channels. They are, you have to have a gibbon boy, boni gili gizaj. When you make your job your source, your whole world is limited to what another person has decided to pay you. So if you have decided that what your worth is 90,000, your whole world is locked. And it will not just be in cash, it will also lock within your mind. Every month, you can't think of anything beyond what 90 can do. If they, they, they decide that it's 200, that's where no do your job you have to expand your mental capacity through knowledge then you have to expand your creative capacity through visions and dreams through pictures through imagination you have to find things that help your imagination do you know what i started doing i found that my city was in Nugu. There was not much to help me envision what God was saying. So I created two places I go. I go to Benin. Once in a while, sit on that papa. Just look around and see the mighty things that God has done with a man. A child born thrown at dustbin to die. Very sickly. Has built how many schools? Built an university. Built the largest church of the Torun in the whole of Africa at that time. He just built a small st a stadium and roofed it. And people will feel it. I'll come for program. People will be outside. I said, what kind of thing is this? Well, most churches who were Pentecostal and charismatic were mushroom in Nigeria. One man. And one day he told how he did it. He said to break the limitation of his mind, he will go visit a robot university. See what a robot did. Pictures. Then after a while, he, he, he got a picture of it and brought it with him, pasted. Then he will go with T.L. Osborne, see what T.L. Osborne is doing, how stadiums are being packed. He will go visit some of the great auditoriums they built in the U.S. And then he will come back. Then he will snap pictures. They will take photographs. He will come back. He said, when my mind starts clouding back because of the environment, you see, environment matters. Exposure helps fate. You see, and I, I start being squeezed back to my size. I start getting small. Faith can squeeze back like a football being deflated because of too much exposure to unbelief, too much exposure to people who are negative, who don't believe anything good can happen. When I hear too much of that and I find myself deflating, deflating, I look for another thing and travel for one of those conferences. I'll get there and see the auditorium. I see all that. And people are just hearing the message. So I'm hearing and seeing. Then they pay T.L. Osborne a visit in their house. Seven bedroom mansion. He said they're dreaming of his house. And that's how the capacity was in life to build the Faith Miracle Center. It's Benin that was the incubation center. We couldn't go to America. At least America has been brought down. We could go to Benin and see it. One man was an eagle flying in Africa. And we're wondering, is he not the same God? Sometimes I look at the Bible. Is he the same Bible? Is there an American version? Until the man told us how he also went to learn it. Ah, and I saw. The same God is rich unto all that call upon him. There is no respect of person. God does not love one person better than the other. God, not. This is not God. He's your father. He doesn't do partiality. So the second place I used to come was Lagos. And you know, at that time, couldn't afford flight, so I come with bus. And the buses will pass you through Ojota, Maza Maza, all those kind of places. When I land, there is nothing to see. It's, it looks like where I live. I'm looking for something that will help my mind. So they told me, no, this, this is not the real Lagos, so go to VI. So I will drive to VI. 
I'll land in Echo. I'll do like we want to book for program. I noticed initially, sometimes when I, I try, the, what I was wearing, the way I dressed, they won't believe. They will drag, tell us to get out of here. So I, will, I started adjusting, at least the packaging. Just wear some things at least. Then I'll do like, yes, we're going to be doing a program. Because instead they just show us, they won't. Uh, they will open the place. I'll be looking at this hall. My head will expand and contract. God said, balance here, you are my son. Stop behaving like a village boy. The making of another Abraham. You are next on the storyline. I say you are next. And the change of your story starts now. One thing you guys will learn about me. I don't believe in when God has finished making you, you remove this story and make people look like you fell from the sky. You never had problem. I don't believe in that because what you're doing is you're removing the ladder. Somebody that is down there that is starting is not able to find his way. They will stay there and be looking at you. They, they don't know. They think we are, they are so special. God just carved them out for some. No. God makes extraordinary people out of ordinary people. God does extraordinary things using ordinary people. As long as I live, he must get the credit and the glory constantly for my life. It's ordinary bush boys. Like David, looking after sheep that God makes big boys from. I go to VI. There's one man that had the largest church in Lagos. Faith is faith. You know the transplanter. There's one man that had some big stuff going. I'll go visit this. My head will be expanding when I look at. I said, Lord, please. I don't want something big like this. Just this section. Just his choir, please. He said, stop talking like that. I said, you talk like me. Call the things that be. You know. Okay, I will correct myself. I said, okay, I'm sorry. I cancel that nonsense that came out of my mouth. Please. That's when I understood when the disciples say, help my unbelief. I'll co correct it back. Then I got books. Can I have him books? And I started reading it. Can I have him his works, his tapes, his books did wonders in my life. God said to Abraham, he said, as far as your eyes can see, I'll give you. That means you, your vision, your picture, your dream is what sets the limits. But God did one more thing, verse 15. He said, get up, go and walk on it, visit for all the land which you see. To thee I will give it unto thy seed. Then verse 16, verse 16. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So if a man can number the dust of the earth. You see the same picture about child. Childbirth. But now he has moved to property. So shall thy seed be numbered. Then verse 17. Arise. It's God giving the command. Walk through the land. In the length of it. In the breadth of it. For I will give it to you. So now. Get up. Do some prayer work. That's what I started doing. I came back to my city. Early morning. Saturday mornings. When there is less traffic. I will drive round and I'm declaring. God said, get up, go look at what I'm talking about. So I, when, when the city start compressing me again, too many unbelievers, I'm surrounded with the people that have not, they don't, <laughs> I will leave again, visit. It could be once in three months, once, whatever. When I'm coming back, my faith is surcharged at its highest frequency. Like the battery charge is full charge. Then all of a sudden, the first land came. It was a gift. Church was believing for boss. All of a sudden. If you see stories there. Eh? That would, I need to write a book on some of these things. My journey of faith. Wow. 
you are believing God for a spouse and something is telling you you will never get married and I have seen 60 year old get ladies married I have seen even 65 year old woman married and there is a woman in the Bible called Abigail she was married to a rich man called Naba and David, David was looking for a wife and he left all the single young woman the moment her husband died he went to her, married her people that have already married have finished having children sorry that I'm going to use this word they are Tokumbo are still getting married and somebody that's a young girl is not seeing possibility go and get a picture put paste, paste in your, behind your if it is some whatever there is a Washington paste but don't say it's higher in there you will marry that's another person's property but something that will help you your mind get pictures of wedding and then find one or two scriptures put it there as far as this heaven and earth exists as far as God is real that is how your reality will be there is a gestation period some happen faster some take a little time but the same thing it will deliver the same result then in the laws that deliver it, change your confession and start calling the things that be not start speaking those things into reality stop destroying your future with your mouth stop saying all the bad things that you used to say listen you might need to get this tape put it in your phone listen to it over and over again listen to me you looking at me you are now operating at the realm of 10 million 20 million that's what you see so to you you think that's money didn't you see what inflation has done that had 10 million and 20 million is not up to 1 million anymore So who told you you cannot make money in dollars and in pounds? Do you know that when the world now is a global village, technology has now made it that no matter what you sell, the world can be. Do you know that hundreds of thousands of people followed Night of Glory just because of technology? A blind man, they sent us Pastor Nob can even show it to you, the video. Blind man, healed, all kinds of things that happen. And you are still talking about how many customers came to your shop. Keep the physical shop. Look, use the social media editor to see that the whole world, you can be selling your hair product from here and have more American customers, more British customers, more European customers than even those are here. So you change what you say. And then the last is action. Faith has corresponding action. And that's why he told the man, get up and go and work on it. Don't sit down and say, I'm just believing. If you are believing, get up and act in line with your faith. If faith has no works, then that faith is dead. It's important. It will not produce any result. I think one thing about me, and I learned it from Abraham, I learned it from Papa Idahosa. When the word of God comes to me, I'm impregnates my heart. Where I beat other people is in action. Action. You know, Brother Mike, you, you came and met us. I don't know where we were. I'm sure you saw the hall where you did the, the training, the mission training for us in Lagos many years ago. 
it gives you an idea of the size of programs we do in those days. And you are teaching on mission. And when you finish, the revelation came so much to me. And I said, so I'll finish hearing this and sit down here. When you guys packed your bag and left back to your houses, after that program, I packed my bag and left for Accra. Not knowing where I was going to sleep, not knowing what I was going to eat, not knowing how I was going to. I slept on the floor. I went through the phases. I don't want to tell you what God did there. I don't wait till I can count all the things because he that observed the wind will not sow. He that observed the crowd will not reap. It affects both sowing and reaping. It is not until I see the money in my account before I give to God. No, no. You have to expand your faith for finance through kingdom investments. You see, you need a vision behind giving. The harvest of giving is the small thing. The real thing is God wants to make you a father. He wants to make you big. Because he needs a bigger pipe to channel resources, to do big things. You are this straw that they used to drink juice. Shh, that's how you are sucking resources on earth. That's not going to. You will die small. God wants to enlarge you. Go and look at the type NMPC lay to pipe oil. Go and look at the type they used to pipe water into cities. This is your straw. And when you finish, service ends, you feel like you are there. No. That's God that asked me to come and tell you guys this thing. I love you that are hearing me. And he told me, don't just tell them, tell them your story. He said, this is the same thing with every man that you admire in the kingdom. They did not fall from heaven. Since that time, I have made journeys. I have seen other people. I have learned from others too. It's the same story. In Genesis 15, uh, Genesis 11, a, a group of people said they will build a tower that will reach unto heaven. The Bible said the whole earth was one language. I want to give you the last key, the language key. The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And they wanted to build a tower that would reach heaven. You know, the Tower of Babel, verse 3. They said, go to let us make bricks, burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone and slime they had for mortar. I want you to notice that they took the action. They didn't just do the confession. They had the dream. They actually spoke their dream. But what else? They added action. I've already told you all this. Then look at verse 4. And they said, go to let us build a city, tower who, that will reach heaven. Let's be scattered at verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. And verse 6. I want you to listen to this. And that's where I leave you. And God said, behold, the people is what? No. You know, this is not correct English. But yet it's biblically correct, spiritually correct. The people is like the fruit of the spirit. There are nine, but they said the fruit of the spirit is. And they said it listed. God is talking about unity here. That you need a team of people that you bring into synergy with yourself. That a man that has a dream needs a team. And it's not everybody you need in your team. Leave the people that cannot believe. Leave the people. Leave them in the, in the outer court. They will join later when they start seeing the result. But you need a team. A, a team of destiny. People. Believable people. It might be one or two persons. It might be three. That can believe with you. When Mary was told about being pregnant. The angel said. Your cousin Elizabeth. Go find. That's another person that is experiencing what you are experiencing. Find somebody that has been where you are trying to go. Find somebody too that is believing like you. Because faith activates faith. Faith recharges faith. 
Be around company, men and women of faith. Stay away from people who are deflating your faith, who are talking in a different direction from where you're going. You believe in God for a baby. Find people that have also believed in work for them, or people that are in the same. Fight. You are believing God for that cancer to die. Leave stories of people that died. Leave those that this one died of cancer. The other one, they cut off the breast. Find people who conquered cancer. Find their story. Some of them are published on the internet. Find them. Download books and start reading it. Find pictures of people like that and paste. Get Crifro Dollar. He had cancer. He conquered it. The man's minister had been gone. Get, uh, uh, what's this one? In Ohio. Rob Parsley. He conquered cancer. Get the wife of TBN, the founder of TBN. What's her name? Jan Crouch conquered cancer. Get the wife of mother, uh, the, uh, Joel Austin's mother. Joel Austin's mother. Eh? Mother had cancer, conquered it when her husband was alive, long before Joel Austin went into ministry. She's still alive till now. After more than 30 something years of cancer. Find stories of such people, find pictures of them. You see now, if you don't, you keep. The people who died and all that, you see, that's where you will go. Because when people have that, fear strikes them. It doesn't matter what it is, it's the same thing. The just will live by faith, but when the same just draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him, God said. What pleases God is faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. That's his language. The people is one. They are all have one language. This thing that they began to do. Now, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. I have talked to you about imagination, have I? That the moment you incubate it, you find pictures to help you. Not just, and also have times when you meditate and do that. Nobody, no demon, no forces of darkness, no human being, no government can stop that dream from coming to pass. But then, one aspect that a lot of people have to learn is the corresponding action. Anytime believing God for a new level, I so in line with that level. Take this and Write it both in your heart. You can even write it on paper. All of you that will be part of this. When we come back from Maranatha 2023, where you will find yourself, apart from miracles of finance that will happen, it is what will happen to your world, your world, you, that is looking at me. Where you will find yourself. You see, the country now, in 2023, is going to now start coming out of recession. It doesn't matter what happens with the election. God is sending rain back on Nigeria. We have been in seven years, eight years of drought. He's sending rain again. But you see, some of you should not wait till seven years after before you start hooking in. Some of you should not wait till five years after. The truth is that for the man of faith, it is your faith that creates your weather and your season. You don't wait for whatever is happening. That's why if local economy is struggling, plug into the global economy, plug into kingdom economy. And there are five you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand And I will call Upon your name, 
Ah uh...